Good morning, everyone that's listening in Eastern Time and watching in Eastern Time. It's 8 o'clock this morning, and we are going on our 25-minute correction. 25-minute, if you all have been watching my previous videos, you know that I thought today was going to be the 35-minute walk. That's actually going to be on Saturday. Today, we're doing our 25-minute walk for Thursday, day three. And we have some good stuff and a lot of stuff to talk about. I really liked how the notes worked for me last time, so we got some more notes this time. And we're gonna talk about some stuff on this list. First, I just wanna welcome everyone, whether you're existing or where you're new, or whether you're new, welcome to the channel. The channel is called Task With Me. Task With Me is meant to be a channel where I do random tasks with the intent of doing different things myself just to sort of break up the rut of every day and have the community join and have some other people try out some new things that maybe they've never tried. And if you all follow with me, by the end of doing these playlists or series as I call them, we will have completed X amount of tasks and it will be neat because you'll feel the same way as I do, challenging yourself and doing something different. So that's always fun. So if going on this list here, we have a couple updates about the channel itself. Yesterday we got about 23 viewers on my second channel. Not my channel, my second video. I'm excited about that. It might not seem like much, but at least people are watching, people are getting it. Hopefully they're sticking around, watching these videos, feeling the same way that I do about making them. And I wanna talk about subscribers. We're still at six subscribers. I know maybe it's not the best idea to be counting these things daily, I am new, I gotta give it some time, gotta let it marinate a little bit. But yesterday, I had some thoughts about how I can start growing the channel. I started doing some research as any new YouTuber probably should, and I'm trying to implement things incrementally. I don't wanna go from zero to 100 because then I'll be overwhelmed. And maybe I won't be happy with it fast enough. So what did I do? This very, very small thing you might notice is across my different social media accounts, which if you guys, if you all do not know about, you'll see that there's a new banner on the YouTube with the headline I mentioned on my first video, I believe, called Tasks Together. It's just something else to add there, sort of like a branding. Maybe that will change. I think for now it's good. I like it. It's simple. And really, there's no reason to change. So Tasks Together, it's across my social media accounts. If you look at the banner on YouTube, you'll see that I have my Twitter there. You should follow me on Twitter if you want to get updates that might otherwise go unnoticed on YouTube. I try to use the discussions board on YouTube on the channel, but I'm not sure how accurate that is. So if you go on the Twitter account, I tend to post there at least once a day to give the community and anyone that's following some info about what I'm planning on doing for that day. So go ahead and follow me on Twitter, at Task With Me, same as the YouTube channel. I also have another account that I created on Reddit. Now, why did I create an account on Reddit? Well, I spoke to this a couple days ago that I really enjoy Reddit. I posted one of the first posts I made regarding tasks with me was on Fort Lauderdale. And I remember that they have the Reddit public access network. And the best thing about that is anyone can go there. There, there isn't necessarily a requirement. You don't have to pass a specific set of tasks funny enough to be able to get there you just have to follow a set of rules and one of those rules or rather none of those rules talk about self-promotion so i did a 45 minute walk yesterday on reddit live and even though it was my off day i thought i should take advantage of my off day and do something live where people can watch it and hopefully walk with me and i think at one point we peaked at 22 viewers maybe for about i'm not sure 30 seconds it's pretty good but in total at least reddit let me know that we got to around 180 watchers which i thought was very neat that was a 45 minute walk and my intent is to post on twitter when i'm going to go live and so i made a new reddit account of course it's you slash task with me same as the channel so we keep all the branding in sync user task with me is where I will be posting these Reddit live streams. And if you follow me on Reddit, you will be able to get notified of when they're happening. And I'll also make sure to post them on Twitter before I go live. That way you can join in on the fun for whatever task I'm doing. 
So I'm very much looking forward to that. I do plan on going live tomorrow as it is another rest day again. Whether you want to take a rest day, whether you want to watch me live, whether you want to do your own thing, I encourage you to do whatever feels right, whatever feels comfortable. The only real days are the ones that I put on YouTube, the ones that are following the Runner's World article that I put up when I initially started this channel. So that's a lot of good stuff right there. I'm very excited for all that. I'm very much looking forward to the next Reddit live stream, like I mentioned, but most importantly, I want to get to that 1,000 subscriber count so I can do it on YouTube as well. Once I can do it on YouTube, I'll probably deprecate Reddit. I'll let the Reddit users know, hey, we're going solely on YouTube now. So let's get to 1,000 subscribers. Let your friends know. Let your family know. People that want to get into walking, let them know. Let's join in. If you all are familiar with the Peloton, the group of bikers, let's do it together. Morning, guys. Got some runners. They're doing the same thing. It's good to wake up and move. All right, so let's go on with the next thing on the list. I want to talk about my dog, Sawyer. I've always wanted a golden retriever. I've always wanted a dog. I always grew up with a dog. I had many dogs in my house when I was young. I'm talking about 10 or before. I had like five dogs in my house. It was crazy. I don't even know how we managed that, but somehow we did. And then my official childhood dog, and I mean, when I say childhood, I mean that crucial adolescence puberty period was Max. And Max is, was a yellow Labrador retriever, and he was amazing. He passed away two years ago. He lived to be 15, so he had a full life. And he was the best dog I ever had, truth be told. And I wanted a similar experience. And so one day, I was in Tennessee with my girlfriend, Paola. And I literally told her, hey, we got a dog. And we're going to pick him up in a couple weeks. And the funny thing is, she was less than enthused. I wasn't expecting the reaction I got. But she had a really bad experience with the puppy that she got herself. And so she wasn't quite ready to get a dog. But I needed to stand firm. I wanted to get the dog. So we did, but let's talk a little bit about where I got the dog. But before we do that, I'm gonna be moving a little bit from this area as it's a little bit windy. I'm gonna try to stray away and get to a point where not as windy. Okay, so let's talk about this dog. There is a place called Petland, and Petland, if you've ever been to Petland, the dogs there are, they look great. The dogs look great. They're very expensive. You can buy these packages so that you get all these things included, but it's very expensive. And I've heard rumors that they're not actually treated that well. So I wanted to go with something cheaper, so I decided to go with a breeder, a golden retriever breeder from South Florida. And I did. Now, the first time I saw my dog, when he was about five weeks, the, the breeder was actually posting videos weekly and letting us know the dog's status. And the first time I saw the dog, the house that we went in was, I think the nicest way to say it was, it was, it was a pigsty. <laughs> Maybe that's not too nice, but it wasn't, it, it didn't look like good, a good place to keep dogs and my girlfriend was really not having it I was sort of okay with it I wasn't as affected but my girlfriend really didn't like it she didn't feel like those animals were being treated right so when we got Sawyer which is what his name is now and we decided that beforehand he he came with a series of infections now although we were guaranteed that he was in perfect health he started off with a severe ear infection for about the first three weeks that he was in the apartment that we lived in at the time. There was sort of a loft. And why is that bad? Well, that period is crucial training and eating period and growth period. He wasn't doing anything. He was barely eating. We had to get him on a paste for urgent care so that they can get 
as many of the calories and nutrients as they can get without having to eat dry food. It was like a paste. So I think because of that, the way that Sawyer grew up was he got heavy. You know, I was always hoping that he'd get to that target 65 pound weight. I felt like he was growing slowly. I think now he is a little short and he still sort of suffers from infections and things like this easily, but we try and take as much care of him as we can. One of the things that I admire about Paola is that her attitude toward the dog has changed completely and she treats that dog as if it were her own baby, which, you know, of course I do as well. But she introduced me to brushing dog's teeth, which I never did with Max Max. I, I hate to say it, but we didn't groom him. We took him to get groomed every once in a while. You know, we gave him showers, but for Sawyer, man, he gets the works. So we try to, you know, keep, keep as much care of him as we can. And it shows he's doing well. I might have, I might be introducing Sawyer to you all soon. So he's my one-year-old golden retriever. His name is Sawyer. We got him on, what was it, February, no, January 10th is when we picked him up. And his birthday was just recently on November 15th. And he was excited. We went to Petco. By the way, for all dog owners, you can go to Petco and you can get a, if you show them your birth certificate, they'll give you a free pound of dog treats from their little dog treat bar. So we did that for him and he loved it. We, we were gonna try to get a cake but we ended up not getting the cake. We got one of those like probiotic yogurts that they have next to the cash registers. He ended up loving it. And at the end of the day, I think he just wants to be with us. So that's how we got Sawyer. It happened randomly. And I will say that there have been days that have really tested my patience, but I'm actually very happy that we got him because I feel like my life will be completely different without him. So that's awesome. So shout out to Sawyer. Looking forward to seeing you in a little bit, buddy. All right, so let's go into some of the next topics here. I want to talk about some TV shows I've been looking at recently and want the community thoughts on them. My girlfriend and I, we have binge watched a lot of shows. I can go through some of them. Let's see, there's one on Netflix called Impost Imposters. That one was very good, highly recommended show. There was another one called Stranger. That was a really good show. Our favorite one that we've seen together, which I saw 10 years ago with my dad was Lost. She had not seen Lost and I got the pleasure of introducing her to it. And that felt awesome because that show is so, that show is so good and it's so mysterious and you really have to pay attention to it to understand that vibe. If you guys, if you guys know what I mean. There's a, there's a particular vibe you get when you watch it. And you just have to just have to really pay attention to get that vibe. And actually, fun fact, we named Sawyer after Sawyer in the show. People think it's Tom Sawyer. We named Sawyer after Sawyer and Lost. That's actually, I thought Sawyer is probably one of my favorite characters in that show, so we named my dog. Now recently we're watching Entourage on HBO. Also a very cool show. If you all have not seen Entourage, pretty much follows an entourage through their lives in Hollywood where their best friend is a movie star. Very cool show. It's, real, it's a real guy's show, you know? It's fun to watch. Those are the two main shows that we've like been watched. I'll say Entourage and Lost. There, there are actually more, but I just can't remember right now. I mean, we were watching, you know, other things like random things, I don't know, Cake Wars or kitchen nightmares things like this you know you can watch them in passing we watched is it parts unknown by anthony bourdain rest in peace great show girlfriend didn't like it too much but i liked watching it because it made me feel a little more cultured so that was fun what do you guys think about those shows some other shows i want to get her into are breaking bad i know breaking bad is objectively a good show i think i mean i haven't met anyone that didn't like the show and i've tried to get Paola into it but it's the same thing like Entourage and Lost. We always watch the first episode. She kind of nods off, goes to sleep, doesn't really give it a chance. But then the second time, she does. So I'm gonna try and creep her into Breaking Bad again. Hopefully we can get into that. Really would love for her to see that and get into that whole thing. Because then we can try watching shows like Better Call Saul, which I also think is great. 
So yeah, what do you all think? What are your favorite shows? Any shows that I'm missing out on, especially for, you know, those Netflix and chill nights, the date nights. That's a thing now. All right, cool. I'm gonna go on a little break now to let you all focus on your walking. We're at 15 minutes of a 25 minute walk. It's day three. Let's keep going. I'll come back in a bit. All right, we're back here after a two minute break. I'm sort of in a little bit of a windy section right now, so apologies if it's breaking up the noise too much. Hopefully by the time I reach the stop sign here, we'll be able to get out of it. But the next thing I want to talk about was the production here, or what we're doing. Of course, I've already started thinking about it because I know inevitably when I start running and jogging, doing the more intense workouts, I'm gonna need a better way of filming this. And so here's some of the things I thought about and I would love if the community chimed in gave me some opinions, let me know what might be the best way to accomplish what I want to accomplish. So I saw that the GoPros, recent ones at least, have the stabilization lens. So I think that's something that's crucial to be able to film the way that I want to film. And so I was thinking about possibly getting a GoPro 9, whether it be a new one or one from a second hand, something like OfferUp or eBay. What do you all think about that camera? Are there better cameras out there for what I want to do, especially once I start jogging, bike riding, running, things of this nature? I really like the stabilization lens and based on YouTube, it seems really cool. Secondly, oh, windy area. Secondly, maybe I should just stay with the iPhone. I'm sure there are mounts that I can buy for the iPhone that I can use while I'm running, doing all these other activities. That way I can save some money on getting the GoPro and just use the iPhone I already have because these new iPhones are packing some pretty good quality with these videos. So I don't think the GoPro is maybe absolutely necessary. Maybe the iPhone with some good mount can help. I saw a good mount yesterday. You have to hold it while you're doing the thing. And I say the thing because it could be anything. So that's okay, maybe not bad. I've seen some people use the GoPro on their heads, but I'm sure there's a head mount for the iPhone with stabilization. So what do you all think? How do you all film your videos? Something else that I've noticed, it's wind. I mean, is there a way to block out wind and make it better? Is that something that you have to handle during post-production? Or are there some type of headphones that have some filter around them that sort of block out some of that wind? That'd be really awesome if you guys know of any of those. Um, maybe I shouldn't say headphones, I should say mic. I'm wearing headphones that happen to have a mic on them. So are there any mics that you all know of that I can use? that might better suit my needs when it comes to this outside activities. I'm mostly concerned with that when it comes to biking. I, I wanna do the biking video soon and I plan on doing biking for you know starting at one mile and going up. So they won't be short videos. And I wanna make sure that the audience can view them and listen to them well. So what do you all think about that? Very curious to see. 
I'm still learning a lot of this stuff based on some articles I've read, but I know there are a ton of pros out there. Really, really would love to see how you all think. If you guys have been following, if you guys have been listening, we have five minutes left of our 25 minute walk on day three of this first week out of seven weeks for our warm up series. I wanna go quickly again over what that means. If you're all following the Runner's World article, you'll see that the first step in getting to that 5K is for seven weeks, building up your knee strength, your leg strength, your endurance by doing walking, brisk walking. This will eventually culminate in the ability to do about one hour briskly, easily. And after this, we'll start doing some jogging and walking, I believe starting on the eighth week. I'm not even sure if it starts for an hour. Let's say it starts for an hour. It's going to be 40 minutes running, 20 minutes walking, but not in that order. It's two minutes running, one minute walking. So that's the progression of that. And that's what the plan is. So if you're new, subscribe if you want to see that sort of thing. Remember, I have other social media platforms where you can be updated of these news as well. Let's continue on to the last topic here. We have a couple more minutes, but something that I know we all love is food. I love food. I feel like I can eat anything. My favorite, I really don't know what my favorite things are, but I would probably say, actually, I would probably say, and more recently after meeting my girlfriend, Sushi. We live next to a fantastic sushi spot. It has, has the best sushi, I believe. We have been to several sushi spots, and we always tell each other, hey, next time you want sushi, let's go to that sushi spot. It's awesome. It's so good. I love the shrimp tempura roll or the dragon roll. Always get fried calamari, and the salad with the peanut sauce is awesome. They didn't even know that existed until I moved to Fort Lauderdale. Can you imagine? And I'm 27 now, so it took me until I was 24 to know that even existed. I was missing out on a lot. I also love American food. I love burgers, fries, beer, pizza, all that really greasy, great stuff. Really love that. I wish my girlfriend was a little more open to these things. She's vegetarian. Not only is she vegetarian, she's picky. So sometimes I wish that I can relate to her on that level when it comes to food. At this moment I can't, but it's okay. Whenever I go visit her family, her mom has two daughters. She might not be used to cooking, or rather she is not used to cooking for two. She's not used to cooking for two. And so when I come over, it's like she has to cook for five. And she always tells me, man, you eat so much. How do you do it? Because she's used to her daughter not eating a lot. So I'm always told that. And yeah, I feel like I can eat anything. I'm one of those people that loves the big breakfast. I tend to have eggs, hash browns, bacon, bread, avocado, all that stuff on my breakfast plate. And then I'll sort of slowly taper off throughout the day since I know it's, you know, I can't be eating that much every single time. I gotta be decadent in the morning and get a little, get a little lower throughout the day. Well guys, we're coming up on our 25 minute mark. We're at 23 and a half minutes. Apologies if it's windy. I know it might be reducing a little bit of the audio, audio quality, but please bear with me. I'm gonna wrap this up by saying thank you to everyone that has been watching. I would love to get your feedback on how you all feel about these videos. If you've been watching, have they been helpful? Is it something that you look forward to doing? I know that if I had something like this where I can say I want to do a 25 minute walk I can watch this 25 minute video and I'll be done I probably would like to listen to it because that's all I have to do I just have to make it through one video and I get my workout in so I really really like that I'm turning around here again thank you all for watching looking forward to hearing your feedback words of encouragement anything that you can tell me to help me improve my viewer base and my channel also you all know that I have social media you can go ahead and follow me on Twitter and reddit with the same handle task with me you can see the links on the banner on top follow me there for updates subscribe like hit that notification bell if you want to see more of these thank you all again so much for watching have a great day 
Stay fit and stay healthy. See you next time.